Welcome to Beat the Heat with Weatherization and Building Envelope Upgrades. We are excited to be co-hosting this event today with the American Chemistry Council Plastics Division and Con Edison. I'm going to briefly review some housekeeping items today before we get started. First of all, this event will be recorded and we will distribute the recording after the event. And second, our attendees will be muted throughout the presentation, so please direct your please direct your questions to the chat. We have a great agenda lined up today. We're going to hear opening remarks from Con Edison. Then we'll go to presentations from NYC Accelerator, Con Edison, and the American Chemistry Council Plastics Division. And finally, we'll switch to breakout sessions about halfway through this event. So please do stick around with us all the way through to the end. Today's speakers include Gladys Cora, Project Verification Specialist for NYC Accelerator, Sean Hoyt and Peter Goldberg, Section Managers for Clean Energy Networks port and Portfolio Planning and Analysis from Con Edison, and Amy Schmidt and Jay Crandall from American Chemistry Council Plastics Division. Amy is a Director of Building and Construction, and Jay is a Technical Consultant on the Foam Sheathing Committee. Without further ado, I will um, hand it over to Sean Hoyt for opening remarks. All right, good morning, everyone. I, I trust you're well and safe and warm on this Wednesday morning here in New York City. Or if you're elsewhere, um, hope everything is all right. We bring you, we're gathering here today to really discuss um, ways that customers can help improve their energy efficiency uh, across their facilities or in their homes through weatherization and building envelope measures. Um, it's recorded by NASA that this past July was the hottest ever recorded since we started recording temperatures since back in 1880, right? And we're, we're forecasting that temperatures are gonna continue to increase and building envelope is a, a great technology and way to keep your homes and facilities cool in the summer and obviously keep temperatures in and warm in the winter. Um, at Con Edison, we are committed to clean energy, which we'll discuss a little bit later during the, the webinar, but we just wanna make sure that you have all the information um, in front of you that equips you to make the decisions more readily. Um, my role here at Con Edison is to promote and cultivate widespread cross-sector collaboration and partnering with the Accelerator and the American Chemistry Council, we have put together a pretty compelling message and material here for you today so that we could help meet your needs. So without further ado, I'll turn it back over to the Accelerator and we'll get the presentation started. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, we'll go through a little bit about New York City's pathway to decarbonization, uh, New York City Accelerator Program, and also Local 187. Currently, 68% of the buildings of the emission come from buildings in New York City, and 90% of these existing buildings will still be standing by 2050. In an effort to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050, the city has implemented a series of decarbonization policies, including the Climate Mobilization Act of 2019, uh, which is one of the largest climate solutions enacted by city globally. And in addition to that, also implementing programs like New York City Accelerator provides that free assistance to transition the city to carbon neutrality, but also promoting uh, economic growth. Uh, so how can New York City Accelerator help? We are a city-backed program uh, that helps building stakeholders comply with local law, uh, boost their energy, their building performance, achieve energy savings, and also reduce carbon emissions across New York City. We do achieve that by providing the free technical help uh, to and also assistance to implement building upgrades, deliver expert advice to deliver, to determine the requirements to help meet the local laws, and also connect the buildings with a service provider that will be able to implement these uh, energy projects. Any, we work with any building that is uh, 5,000 square feet and above, uh, new or existing. 
uh, any smaller buildings, we do refer them to our partner organization, like the Center for New York City Neighborhoods, which is more, um, which they specialize in that, in that market segment. Uh, you, there's no cost, there's no catch or commitment to be part of our program. We're completely free. Uh, this slide provides a little bit what can you expect when you participate in our program. Um, it's obviously every participant's journey would look different uh, based on their needs. We do customize our services based on the building stakeholder we're working with, uh, but also the building needs. Um, the first step would be to get in touch with us. Uh, you can call us or email us or even submit a web form uh, in our website. Um, you will be connected to a program coordinator who will, assign, will then ask you a few questions about your building and then assign you a dedicated account manager who will be your main point of contact throughout the program moving forward. Uh, once you get in touch with them, uh, the account manager will do will review data about your building, but also important is to work with you to understand the building systems better. Um, they will discuss your fi their findings, uh, local law compliance, uh, potential energy efficiency uh, measures that could be implemented, uh, and the appropriate next steps. Once you've made a decision in which projects you would like to pursue, the account manager will help you identify all available incentives. Uh, that are through utility and state uh, funded programs. In addition, we also can provide you with finance, additional financing help as we have actually a financing specialist in our team. Uh, we also have additional, uh, a, a wide team of very skilled professionals that are specialized in different areas like affordable housing, solar, uh, high performance retrofit, new construction and carbon challenge. Um, we do provide the expert, free expert guidance to, um, uh, to accelerate the energy efficiency and also decarbonization projects across New York City. But we do not uh, do the installation of these measures or do energy audits, um, but we can connect you with contractors who would help you uh, and proceed with implement implementation of these measures. There, there is no limit to the amount of or the number of consultation that you'll receive from us. We will help you every step of the way and even with project follow-ups. Uh, in the next few slides, I'll dive a little bit more into Local Law 97 and the system we could provide towards it. So the centerpiece of Climate Mobilization Act is Local Law 97, uh, which requires that all buildings that are over 25,000 square feet to meet ambitious climate, uh, ambitious carbon reduction targets. Buildings that exceed these emission limits will start uh, facing annual penalties uh, starting in 2025. If you look at the graph on the right, you'll see that the graph like ramps down over time, which shows that these uh, emission limits become more stringent over the years. The first carbon emission will start, will be applied in 2024 till 2029, more stringent ones in 2030, 2034, and so on to reach the 80% reduction. Um, starting with, in order to achieve the compliance building will be required to show that their uh, emissions are below the limit for their respective year. Um, and starting in May, 2025, buildings will, that are subject to the law will be required to file a local 187 report that will be certified by a registered design professional on an annual basis. Um, affordable housing have some different requirements. We'll be diving a little bit deeper into that in our next few slides. This slide provides, um, it'll show some insight and type of measures that we would recommend um, to pursue to achieve a certain greenhouse gas emission, uh, emission reductions. Uh, this is applicable to different type of to market rate or, to for, or affordable housing. Uh, it's a different range based on how they're performing uh, and the type of measures that they would, if they implement, they would achieve a certain greenhouse gas reduction um, limits and to comply with Local 97. As mentioned before, look, uh, affordable housing has some different requirements as far as um, filing for Local 97 or um, complying with Local 97. Um, for buildings that have over 35 uh, units that are rent regulated, they, will, they can either choose to uh, show that they're meeting the 2030 emission limits 
by 2024, or they can choose the prescriptive pathway, which is a list of uh, 13 measures that will be needed to will need to be implemented by 2024. For buildings that are have one rent regulated unit but not more than 35 percent, they, they have the option to they to um, file local law 97 in 2026. And in the next slide, we'll dive a little bit more into the 13 PCMs that I just mentioned. Um, these are the list of the energy conservation measures um, that buildings that chose to affordable housing that they choose to um, go the, choose to comply with local 97 through the prescriptive pathway. Uh, these are the measures, and just to kind of uh, compare it with the first with the the first uh, slide that I showed about market rates and also affordable housing, that if you see both of these slides have listed building envelope related measures. So either way, these type of measures would help you reach that greenhouse gas emission, uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction in complying with local 187. Uh, we'll dive now a little bit more into some tools and resources that we have in our website that um, one of them is the building energy snapshot tool. Um, here is a, a video that will kind of show you as to how to use the tool. Uh, we did um, release this tool last year during climate week. And it's really we really developed it to help visitors enter their address in it, and it will show this different information about their building, like the four block and lot, um, find like different the penalties, estimated local 97 penalties, and energy savings. Um, in addition, you can also choose the option to to print the um, this the information that shows up into it, and that way it's easy shareable with any. Uh, building state stakeholders you might be working with. Um, now we'll go through a few slides about um, talking about our financing assistance that we provide. As um, I mentioned before, we do have financing specialists in our team that will be able to help you navigate um, through the different financing options. Uh, they'll identify applicable financing programs that would be relevant to specific project needs, um, also connect you with capital providers and lenders, and will help you engage building stakeholders through the whole process. Um, another local law uh, that was part of the Climate Mobilization Act was Local 96, which is related to base financing. Um, base is a voluntary uh, financing mechanism that enables you to secure funding for your building, for your building energy and water efficiency projects. And you can repay them uh, through a charge on your property tax bill. This is intended to provide you with a flexible financing option for a variety of projects. Um, we have in this slide listed a few of the benefits of this, um, of PACE, which is fixed rate, um, it's long-term long -term financing, so up to 25 to 30 years. Um, you can trans, it's easy transferable upon property sale, and you can retroactively finance improvements that are completed up to three years earlier. And now I'll hand it over to Sean, who will be discussing the land envelope and weatherization incentives for Con Ed. All right, thank you, Gladys, um, and welcome back, everyone. I'm going to just give a brief rundown about Con Edison and, and how we're supporting this effort from a different perspective. All right, so thanks to the Accelerator for all the good work you're doing. Um, this is just a, about Con Edison for those of you that aren't familiar. Um, we are the electric steam and gas utility that serves the five boroughs of New York City and Westchester County. Um, are almost 14,000 women and men that proudly serve the company and the communities that we live in and um, it's one of the best cities in the world. That's just my personal opinion. Um, we have about 3.3 million electric customers, 1.2 million gas, and about 1,800 steam customers that, that live in, in, in the 10 million people that live in New York City. Um, on the next slide, you'll see where, where our role has shifted. 
Um, traditionally, we have been uh, um, transactional, right? So we provide you this safe and reliable resource and commodity, and um, in return, you pay, right? That, that's the traditional utility model. Um, our customers are very diverse. We're gonna go through three, four key market segments. We have our residential customers that are one to four family units, multifamily, which are five units and above, large commercial industrial that make up the skyline of New York City, and then our small, medium commercial customers that are the backbone of our New York City economy. Think about your bodegas, your restaurants, your small office spaces, fitness centers, um, you name it. Um, our growth strategy is to invest, um, it's actually $1.8 billion now with the success of our clean heat program in energy efficiency and heating electrification by 2025. Um, and a big component of making sure that that target is met is incorporating building envelopes so you could right size your, your heating equipment, your clean heat equipment. And again, from the core business, the traditional strategy, again, which was transactional, we are now moving into the trusted energy advisor role, right? Which is really intended to help guide our customers from start to finish if you need that support to partner with the accelerator and other organizations that have tools and resources that we could um, make available to you and to empower our participating contractor network that is engaging with you that are in your homes, that are in your facilities, helping you make the right decisions daily. Um, the next slide will cover Con Edison's clean energy commitment, which is really outlined in five pillars, right? And this is our commitment to you. Um, we're gonna build the grid of the future, right? The, the grid, we just celebrated our 200th birthday this year, which is um, a major feat for an, an old system that's as resilient and as sophisticated as it is, right? We're continuing to upgrade it daily and making plans for the future to make sure that it remains one of the most reliable systems in the world. Um, we wanna make sure that we empower our customers to meet their climate goals. And that's one of the primary focus points of our energy efficiency programs. Last year alone, we spent about $500 million helping our customers adopt clean energy technologies at their facilities and in their homes. Um, everything from lighting to controls to um, building envelope to electric vehicle charging stations. That's part of our um, pillar two. Pillar three, reimagine our gas system. Now we know we have about 1.1 million, 1.2 million gas customers still in our service territory. We're gonna continue to serve them and provide them safe and reliable gas, but we're also making sure that we provide alternatives so that they have different solutions as we move towards a clean energy future. Um, pillar four, lead by reducing our own carbon footprint. This is mainly being driven by our steam generating team, um, reducing our own scope one and two emissions, as well as reducing the emissions from our vehicle fleet and electrifying the, the vehicles that we operate and that we commute in um, daily. And pillar five, which is why we're all here today, is partnering with all of our stakeholders. So again, widespread cross-sector collaboration, which encompasses um, industry professionals, our trade ally network, um, community-based organizations. We have workforce development initiatives incorporated in that pillar as well as all of our customers and all of you on this call today. We wanna make sure that we are partnering to come up with the best solutions available to the market, to our customers, and for the future of humanity. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Peter Goldberg, and he will outline in detail our, um, our plans for building envelope and weatherization within our portfolio of solutions. Thank you, Sean. So uh, Sean just talked about our clean energy commitment. An important part of that clean energy commitment is our commitment to building envelope. Uh, in order to achieve the ambitious carbon reduction goals laid out in the CLCPA, New York State's gonna have to move aggressively to decarbonize its built environment, especially with regard to space heating. So that means a lot of heat pumps, and it also means a lot of building envelope upgrades. And building envelopes is important because you don't need as much energy to heat buildings that are properly insulated because the heat stays inside. And in a more fully electrified future, reducing the electricity needed to heat buildings on the coldest winter day will substantially reduce the overall electric system costs. And electrifying buildings while managing system costs is, is basically what we mean by smart electrification. And that's what our stakeholders expect from us. And that's what we're working towards. And in 2023, we made a lot of progress, especially regarding building envelope. Uh, this year, we're gaining traction on more ambitious building envelope measures, and we hope to save 13 times as much from building envelope this year as we did in the past. 
our multifamily program gained traction with roof insulation, and we were able to help an awful lot of customers with those kinds of projects. Our commercial and industrial program supported window replacement projects and incentivized our first window insert projects. And our residential program hopes to grow, uh, hopes to triple its savings this year. Uh, our small and medium business uh, program isn't featured on this chart, but we did support a, a window insert project through uh, the small medium business program this year, and we hope to build on that success in the future. So how did we do it? And how are we going to continue growing our support for building envelope in the future? Well, part of the story is larger incentives. In 2022, we increased building envelope incentives for commercial and industrial and multifamily projects to $200 per MMBTU, uh, especially for the, the insulation and, and window projects. Uh, large envelope projects take a, a bit of time to develop. So we really saw that benefit uh, this year. Uh, also this year, we uh, dramatically increased incentives for residential weatherization projects to $5,000 per home. Uh, but to grow even further, we need to make our building envelope incentives more transparent, more accessible, and more certain. Um, we took a big step in that direction this week by launching an Excel-based calculator for building envelope projects. Now, this tool will provide a reasonably reliable estimate of energy savings from building envelope projects without the upfront investment in energy modeling. And you'll have a chance to hear more about that uh, later in a breakout session. We also know that uh, building envelope projects can take a long time to develop and the market wants uh, more certain incentive commitments a couple years in advance. We know uh, we're working on it and we're engaging the stakeholders as part of a, a regulatory process to, to enable those kinds of offers. So uh, to go into a little bit more detail, now we incentivize envelope upgrades for all market segments. Uh, I spoke to the residential, multifamily, commercial and industrial and small and medium business programs a bit on the previous slide. Here I wanna highlight the envelope work done by the New York State Clean Heat Program. Uh, that program incentivizes heat pumps for space and water heating. It also incentivizes projects that pair heat pump installations with building envelope upgrades. And this is an excellent example of smart electrification. And not only do you save more energy by pairing those two measures, you can also reduce the size and cost of the heat pump if a building is properly insulated. Uh, I'd note that for uh, heat pump plus envelope projects, we support not just existing buildings, but also got uh, rehabs and, and new construction projects. All right. uh, next, I want to share a case study that is uh, near and dear to my heart. It's uh, from our first window insert project. Uh, window inserts, uh, it's an extra pane or two of glazing that's usually installed on the inside of an existing window, uh, making a single pane window perform more like a double or triple pane window. Uh, this measure is cheaper and less disruptive than a full window replacement project, and we're, we're pretty excited about it. Uh, in this project, we worked with a 12-story, 67,000 square foot office building in Manhattan on a window insert and HVAC control project. Uh, this project saved about 930 M-pounds of steam, which is about 11,000 therms, as well as 4,000 kilowatt hours annually. Uh, the project overall cost about $325,000. And in this case, we were able to incentivize about 70% of the cost, resulting in a payback period for a building envelope project of 3.1 years. Uh, the next case study is from a multifamily roof insulation project at a 147 unit building in the Bronx. Uh, this project saved about 14,000 therms annually at a cost of a little under $300,000 per year, uh, but we were able to cover uh, $250,000 of that cost resulting in a payback period, again, for a building envelope project of 2.2 years. So that's an example of uh, what our incentives can do to make building envelope projects practical. Uh, if you have any questions um, or want to reach out to us, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to anybody, uh, any of the, the contacts listed on this slide. And with that, I will turn it over to Amy and Jay.
Great, thank you. Um, I'll just run right into it. Um, we are from the American Chemistry Council. Um, Jay is the technical uh, contractor for um, the Conceiving Committee. Um, you can run through the next slide. And uh, we'll be joining us in the, in the breakout. Um, the American Chemistry Council is a large organization. Uh, we represent over 190 companies that are engaged in uh, innovative building solutions. Um, next slide. I have, uh, yep, there you go. Um, the Sheathing Committee is an organization within the American Chemistry Council focusing on uh, those materials and uh, the manufacturer to uh, create them. They have uh, different resources available. I will note on these next couple slides, please take note of the um, website information because they have a whole bunch of resources for you that you're going to want to look at later. Um, not, I can't cover even 1% of it um, during uh, this presentation. Um, also the Spray Foam Coalition is part of the American Chemistry Council. Um, again, representing all different types of spray foam and air sealing materials. And uh, the next slide is uh, the North American Modern Building Alliance. And in this um, organization, we focus on fire safety and that's something also that we wanna pay attention to as we are updating our building envelopes. And this, uh, their website has a lot of great information, things that you aren't gonna to wanna to miss. Um, so New York City, you have a very unique um, opportunity right now. Uh, your uh, building stock is, is very old. <laughs> 83% uh, of your current building stock in New York City uh, was built before 1940. Um, it's hard to read on the, the picture here, but you, the buildings uh, in the top three bars are built between 1719 and 1939, representing that 83%. So uh, that's a long time before air barriers and uh, modern insulation levels were required. So we have a century old problem and we need some modern solutions. So we're gonna talk about that um, in our breakout session. Next slide. Um, and we kind of have a uh, love-hate relationship with building envelopes. Typically, uh, we, we love the way they look. We want them to look aesthetically pleasing, but they also provide many um, essential uh, characteristics for our buildings, weather resistance, um, aesthetic appeal, energy efficiency, fire safety, et cetera. Um, so they're very multifunctional and uh, the materials within a building envelope assembly uh, are, are multiple as well. It's not just one material that you're purchasing and putting on that building envelope. Um, it's usually an assembly of anywhere from three to five, six, seven materials um, that need to work in concert with one another in order to provide all the benefits. Um, so we need to pay attention and let's explore a little bit more why. Next slide. Um, so we know that building operations uh, account for um, estimated 30% of greenhouse gas emissions in the US and installing insulation and in air Air sealing and insulation is a critical first step towards permanently decarbonizing our U.S. building sector. Um, as mentioned before by Peter, uh, it enables efficient use and right sizing of higher performance equipment, um, HVAC equipment. It also um, helps us with renewable energy and making sure that we're using our clean energy um, more efficiently. Next slide. Uh, there's been a number of different studies that have been developed more recently. Um, a study from ICF shown that um, envelope retrofits can uh, lower emissions uh, of the natural gas that today in the U.S. by about 4%. So we can reduce that natural gas. And also that uh, insulation upgrades can be cost effective. Um, Peter also showed some really good examples of how um, the use of that, along with the incentives that you have at your fingertips right now, we can reduce our carbon footprint and also um, have those improvements be very cost effective. Um, the study from ICF also showed a benefit to cost ratio of 1.61 for those building envelope retrofits. And they included um, insulation retrofits 
and uh, mechanical pipe retrofits. So uh, also was mentioned, we can't ignore this big elephant in the room. Uh, we love to look at the easy things, the lighting, uh, there are things that improve more quickly without the big um, involved projects that take a little bit more planning um, and, uh, and commitment. Uh, but we can't ignore the heating. Heating is big. Also, we're knowing we know that cooling is becoming a bigger issue as we have some of the heat waves in the summertime. But as everybody's talking about EV and solar and all these other great things that um, we want to do and we want to add on to our buildings, we can't forget that the big elephant in the room is heating and we need to address it. Um, so we will be um, talking about all of this in our breakout session. Um, with Joy, uh, Jay joining us and talking more about timing, um, triggers, ear sealing, um, roofing, and walls. So uh, please join us. Uh, hope to see you in our breakout room. And with that, I will turn it over to Natasha. Thank you, Amy. Yes, so we are going to transition over to our breakout sessions now. Uh, we have two breakout sessions. The first will be with the American Chemistry Council, focusing on making practical envelope improvements and achieving savings. And the second breakout room will be with Con Edison, discussing leveraging building envelope measures to maximize savings and incentives. So um, I'm going to transition folks over. We'll have about 20 minutes. Um, for discussion, and then we will come back here to wrap up. Folks should be able to navigate. If you decide that you want to pop over to the other breakout session, you should have that functionality. Um, and shoot me a message if you are not able to. All right, we're going to transition over now. almost everyone back. So I hope those discussions were valuable. I know there was a lot of content to get through. Maybe we didn't get through all of it. We will share the slides. Um, like I said, we will share the slides after today's webinar is over. I would like to extend a huge thank you to our partners. Con Edison and the American Chemistry Council's Plastic Division. Uh, this was a really wonderful event today. Lots of great content, great information sharing. Thank you to all of our presenters, Amy, Jay, Gladys, Sean, Peter, and all of the folks who participated in the breakout rooms as well. You can stay in touch with NYC Accelerator, American Chemistry Council, and Con Edison at any of the contact information listed on the slide. As I mentioned, we will indeed be sharing this, um, this content after the event. We thank you all for joining us and wish you a wonderful rest of the day.